Assalamu alaikum uh, everyone. So today we will be having our fifth lecture and we will be discussing about Boolean algebra which we discussed uh, last time. So I hope and suppose that you will be going through the next book which I have mentioned in one of my previous lectures. So, so let's start. So these are uh, the topics which we, we will be covering today, right? So uh, how we express Boolean functions, then uh, uh, the relationship between uh, algebraic equations, symbols and truth tables, then how we can simplify those Boolean expressions by using Boolean laws and axioms, then uh, what are the main terms, max terms, and how we utilize those main terms and max terms, then uh, and our representation, and product of sums and sum of products. So these are the bullets which we will be covering in today's lecture one by one. Right. So this is the whole story uh, regarding De Morgan's law and different axioms and different uh, theorems and laws. So we will be keeping them all the time with us. Uh, so we have to live with them. Right. So we uh, uh, have the commutative law, associative law, then distributive law, then different uh, corollaries, or you can say consensus theorems. Then this is the graphical representation of De Morgan's law that are very very important. Like if you have uh, uh, taken the complement of uh, the two variables x dot y, and this is the whole complement or you can represent it with a dash right so this is uh, equivalent to this and we can have this so break the line and change the sign right so we will be having x bar plus y bar similarly if you take the complement of an OR gate right so this bubble represent the complement right so without this bubble this is the simple our operation so we can handle this complement externally so this will be x bar right and this will be y bar right and then we can have this so you have seen that this is the external representation of the complement you can place a dash or you can have the bar over the variable so we can we have uh, x bar dot y bar so these laws are important and we will be using them on and off right so these are the operations which I've mentioned in the previous slide but now we have switches right so uh, like uh, here we have uh, an element right uh, whenever we are adding one with any variable we will always get one right so this switch is closed right so these are the parallel switches and one of the switches is closed that is representing the one and that is a right and this switch will always be open they are parallel right and this is the variable a and this switch is representing zero right so we have the identity element right regarding the or operation or addition operation then we have placed those uh, two switches here we have parallel and here we have placed them in series so this is the identity element regarding the multiplication or union right so we are dealing the two switches in series right so uh, then again we have the annulment right so we have two switches in series right and one is open all the time right so a dot zero is equal to zero right so then we have uh, idempotent right whenever we are adding the same variables 
we will get the single variables like a plus a so here we have two switches but they are in parallel and uh, we will be getting a right and here we have the item potent in case of the multiplication or AND operation or you can say intersection operation right so these are the switches so we have uh, boolean expression and uh, this is the description these are the switches and then this is the axiom we normally have so again this is the not right right so and uh, if we are adding a with its complement we will be getting all the time one right so we are handling but remember we are handling this a externally a complement externally right so here we have the same uh, a dot a bar but the operation is and or intersection or you can say multiplication right so these are switches are in series and one of these switches open right right so then we have uh, commutative you can say a plus b or you can start from here b plus a it's the same so we can commute right you can place uh, b here or a here it will not make any difference right so here we have uh, the commutative property but the operation has changed so the operation is and operation or you can say intersection operation so we have placed this which is in series right and you can place b here right and you can it will not it, it will not make any difference right so th these are the renowned de morgan's law right so here we have uh, a simplification example right we have uh, to simplify this boolean expression right this boolean expression so what normally we do we, we multiply we multiply a with a right then a with c a c then a b right and then b c so this a dot a this is the identity law right so here we have used distribution law or distributive law right and then uh, we have uh, a over here by using the identity element right yeah. or you can say identity axiom right so you can take uh, the a as common so here we have used identity or law one plus c is equal to one right a dot one is equal to a right so then we have a plus a b plus b c we will take common from those two expressions so a is common one plus b so again we have to use distributive law over here and then we will get b right so let's have uh, an example right so uh, we have this expression and we have to simplify this boolean ex, uh, expression so we have a plus b in uh, in brackets and then we have a plus c right so what we will be doing we will be using distributive law over here and we will multiply right so a dot a right and then a will be multiplied by c and then we have b so we will place them in order we will write a dot b then b c so we have b dot c so here we have used distributive law right so then we have used the identity element so a dot a is equal to a right and rest of the expression will remain the same then we will use the distributive law right so we will take common a as common so 1 plus c right and then 
uh, here we will use the identity element in case of or operation so this is the identity element in place of or operation so 1 plus C is always 1 so a dot 1 plus a B plus B C so here again we will use the distributive law right right so we will take a as common because a dot 1 is always a right so we will take a common right and we will be having 1 plus B and then we will have B C right so here we have used the distributive law and we have taken the common right so then uh, 1 plus B again the identity element uh, for the or operation which is 1 so 1 plus B is always uh, 1 and we have uh, A right and this B C is with us till we started this problem right so then uh, we have a dot one identity element for the and operation we got the a and we have bc so this is the simplification so if you uh, want to check that how much simplification you have achieved right so you can calculate or count the number of gates so this is our operation or gate right so to or gate and one AND gate. So here we have one AND gate and one OR gate. So here we have three gates and here we have two gates, right? So this is the simplification by using those different axioms or laws, right? So let's uh, talk about boolean functions right so uh, as you know that in boolean algebra we normally deal with binary variables right and we have to handle the logic operators that includes and or not right so these are the basic building blocks of these operations logical operations so the functions which normally we have that result in either one or zero example if you have three inputs over here so we will we will be having x as 1 or 0 and y can also be 1 or 0 and then we have z as 1 and 0 and at the output we have one output so we will always be having 0 or 1 so this is the truth table right we have three variables so how many different combinations we will be having so we will be having 2 raised to power 3 because we have three variables so these are eight different possible combinations so we will write them down in order so 0 0 0 0 0 1 if you want to compute the weight of those corresponding elements or variables so 2 raised to power 0 2 raised to power 1 and then we have 2 raised to power so this is 1 this is 2 and this is 4 so if you start counting so we have 0 here right we have 1 here and we have 2 here and we have 3 here and 4 here and then we have 5 here right 6 here right and then 7 here right so these are the different possible combinations of these three different variables if you want to calculate or uh, know that uh, this 4 so you can say that this is 4 plus 0 plus 0 4 so this is 5 4 plus 1 5 and this is 7 4 plus 2 plus 1 so this is 7 so we started from 0 and we uh, count till we reach 7 right so this is the output right 0 0 0 0 1 one one so here you have one right and here again you have one right so you have one so when we have we'll be having the input x is equal to one and y is equal to zero and z is equal to zero the output will be one right when we have x is equal to one 
y is equal to 1 and z is equal to 0, we will have 1, right? So we always will be having some uh, binary output which will be 0 or 1, right? So here uh, you can see that this is x and y and this is y and z. So now you are applying the AND operation over here but the variables are x and y and AND operation over here but the variables are y and z, right? So this is the uh, output, right? So these are the, you can say, intermediate stages, right? So you can see we have an AND gate over here and this is x and this is y so here we have the xy and this is the middle stage or you can say intermediate stage right so here we have yz right and then we have added them by using an r gate right so you can see that these are three variables these are the intermediate stages which are mentioned in red and this is the output right so you can always have the intermediate stages whenever you are dealing with boolean functions right so this is the conversion and this is very important right uh, for example if you have a boolean expression right you can construct a circuit by using that boolean expression but the you have to take in uh, the, you have to consider the simplification element right if you have a boolean expression and you straight away implement the function and that boolean expression can be simplified so the, the circuit will take more number of gates and it will consume more power you need more area so these are the constraints and these are the different uh, parameters which you have to take into mind right so whenever you have a boolean expression you can have the circuit right and uh, if you have a, have a boolean expression you can always have the truth table right but uh, so you you can see that uh, we can move uh, from one node to the other node we have the two directional arrows uh, if you have the boolean expression you can have the circuit if you have the circuit you can draw the boolean expression of that circuit and if you have the boolean expression you can have the truth table and if you have the truth table you can have the boolean expression similarly if you have the truth table you can draw the circuit and if have you have the circuit you can uh, construct its truth table right but uh, it's more difficult to construct the truth table because you have to take into account all the possible combinations uh, by applying those combinations over a circuit if you have a circuit and you want to have a truth table from that circuit or if you have a boolean expression and you want to have a truth table right so it's it's difficult because for example if have, you have two variables and you have a circuit right and you want to uh, construct the truth table from that circuit so you have to verify four different combinations because you have two variables. If you have three variables, you have to verify 2 raised to the power 3, eight different possible combinations and you will be able to construct the truth table. So it's rather difficult to construct a truth table either from a circuit or from a Boolean expression, right? So this is the mechanism of conversion or representation, right? So let's uh, start uh, from the truth table if we have a truth table and we want to have a, a boolean expression right so this is the truth table right and we have three variables so straight away we will know that we can have eight different combinations we start from zero and we count or we go till seven right so this is the output so what we will be doing over here in order to uh, construct the boolean expression from this truth table we will be looking for the corresponding one in this z column right which is showing or representing the output right so here we have uh, one and then we have one over here and one over here right so what we we will mark those one right and then 
what we will be doing, we will be uh, calculating the corresponding Boolean expressions regarding those rows, right? So this is the row and this is the column. So here, uh, what you will do, you will uh, write x bar because we have a zero here. If we have zero in the x column, then we will put bar over here or we'll take the complement, right? And then we have y and z. So if you look at this expression, right? So we will be having the expression uh, like uh, we will have x bar because here we have a zero, right? And we have uh, one over here and one in the z column in this row. So the zero will be replaced by the bar of that variable, so x bar. And here we have one, so we will uh, place y and here we also have one so we will place z so x bar y z so you can see and for the second one we will have x y and z bar because we have a zero over here right and for this we have all ones right x y and z so x y z so we will be having x, y, z, right? So uh, what we will be doing, we will be adding all those different elements, right? Which we got from the corresponding rows. So this is the Boolean expression. We can say g is equal to x, y, z plus x, y, z bar plus x bar y, z. So we got the Boolean expression from the truth table, right? And what normally we say, so these are the products right so we have taken the product of all the variables in this row and then we have taken the product of all the variables in this row and here again we have taken the products right and then we have added them all right so you can say sum of the products right so this is the uh, circuitry so you have constructed a boolean expression from the truth table and then from that boolean expression you can construct the circuitry so we have uh, circuitry over here you can see we uh, we have uh, an OR gate with three inputs and we have three AND gate that are representing those different entities and then we have to represent the complements so we have used those not operators in order to have the complement right so all these uh, different formats they are equal you can have a truth table right it's representing this boolean expression or you can have a circuit so this circuit is equal to this boolean expression or this uh, circuit is also equal to this or satisfy this truth table right so uh, then uh, next comes another important stage that you have to simplify your boolean expression right so if this is the smallest representation or you can have simplification if you look at this uh, boolean expression so yes you can simplify it so what we will be using we will be having uh, different axioms which we already s studied uh, in our previous lectures so here right so uh, we will be using uh, theorem 1 and that theorem 1 is actually uh, from your book from your textbook we always have a plus a is equal to a so this is the or operation and these are the variables so if i take x y z as a so we can have always x y z plus x y z is equal to x y z so this is these two terms will be x y z right so now we will be using the distributive law right so actually we are pairing so this 
x, y, z, z will be paired with x, y, z bar and this x, y, z will be paired with this x bar y, z. So you can take common, right? Uh, z plus z bar and then y, z, x plus x bar, right? Then we always have this postulate, right? A plus A bar is equal to 1. So we will be having x, y and here we have 1 and y, z, here we have 1, right? And then we always have x, y or you can have a dot 1 is equal to a, right? So in this way we have simplified and you can see that uh, we have uh, this after the simplification. So if you compute or calculate the number of gates, if you look at the previous slide we have uh, one and right two and two and operation and then this is the third and right and then we have three and operations right and we have two or operations right and then we have two complements so we will be using or uh, we have to use seven gates if we straight away draw the circuitry from this expression but after the simplification what we have over here you can look if you construct the circuitry you have x y y z so these are the two AND gates one AND gate this is another AND gate and then we have an OR gate in order to have this addition operation so these are the three gates right if you take the common right then you can have two gates so this is much more simplified expression right so if we have x plus z over here and we have y over here so you can have x plus z and y is taken as common so this is the reduction uh, regarding the number of gates so you have reduced so here you have only two gates so if you look we have seven gates and so obviously you gained a lot of advantage right so this is uh, the same which I have uh, explained to you that uh, the advantage of reduction is you have to implement the lesser number of gates so reduced hardware and you will be implementing the same functionality so if you look back right so this circuitry is doing the same we have three inputs three variables right if we replace it with this circuitry it will be doing the same job right so but the number of gates are reduced significantly right so this is the advantage of simplification right and then let's talk about min terms and max terms so uh, if we have three variables, right, like x, y, z, and you, what normally we you we do, we uh, represent all the possible combinations, or we write down all the possible combinations of those three different variables, x, y, z, right. So here uh, we started from zero, one, two, and we reach till seven, right. So these are the three variables and we have eight different combinations and these are the min terms, right? So here, uh, as I have mentioned that where we have zero, we will complement it. Where we have one, we will multiply as it is, right? So here we have x bar, y bar, z bar, or here we have two zeros, x bar, y bar, and then z. So we will give uh, names to those different main terms because these are the product terms so m0 that is 0 right so m1 that corresponds to the first term right zeroth and first main term then uh, so and so forth till we reach the seventh main term side right so then uh, max terms so what we will be doing uh, instead of having the end operation we will be having 
the R operation and there is one more important change so the uh, corresponding slots are columns where we have 0 we will write them as they are x plus y plus z but whenever we come across 1 we will complement it so this is opposite of main term so here we have x operation is also changed we have uh, or operation or addition and then uh, y y as it is but here we have one and we have complemented this z so we all uh, also have names for max terms with capital M so M naught so that row corresponds to M1 and this is M4 and this is M7 right so each end combination of terms is a min terms so here we have used the end operation and here we have the or operation and uh, Moreover, uh, whenever we come across a 1 in max term, we complement that one. But in min terms, whenever we come across a 0, we complement that 0 and we write the 1s uh, as it is. Right? right. So these are the re representation of those min terms. And one more important point is that uh, in the industry, min terms are being uh, used and adopted uh, more as compared to max terms due to their manufacturing inheritance, right? So they have, uh, the materials have uh, such sort of characteristics that uh, we can easily model the min terms right so so these are the min terms right if you look at this truth table and you can represent them right so m7 m6 and m3 right so this is m3 if you count start counting from here 0 1 2 3 then we have a 6 m6 and m7 right so we can have a summation sign over here and this is the same representation if you have this expression so th this indicates that uh, we have the one at the third position and then the sixth position and then in the seventh position regarding the possible combination of those three different variables right and then uh, you can always have the complement for so if you have uh, uh, three variables and this is the output so you can complement this output. So 0 will be complemented 1, 0, 1, then again 0, 1, right? And then we have uh, 1 over here, so we will complement it 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, and here we have 1, 0, 1, 0. So we have complemented the output. So we replaced a bar over G, or you can place a comma R this sign over here right so you can always have the complementing function right so if you have three variables right and uh, we have uh, g as output so you can have the g bar as a complement so you can place a bar over here right or you can have this dash over here so zero will be uh, one because we are complementing the output which is g so 0 will be replaced by 1 in this column 0 1 and 1 will be complemented by 0 0 1 0 1 and 1 0 1 0 so we will be having if uh, we have uh, g so this is the boolean expression and this will be the complemented boolean expression and we uh, mention a bar or dash uh, so x y z right X Y Z bar, and we we can place a bar, right? Or we can simply place a comma or sign over here that indicates the complement, right? Right. So this is the way out how you complement the Boolean expression or complement the functions. So so this is the methodology and these are the step steps which uh, normally 
you follow whenever you complement a boolean expression or you complement a function so uh, you can see that we uh, will be using different axioms and boolean laws in order to complement uh, those functions right so here uh, if you want to complement this x bar z plus y z bar so we will be having uh, complement uh, so you can use the De Morgan's law if uh, we have so break the line change the sign so we we have uh, used De Morgan's law right so again uh, uh, we will be having a complement and then we can use De Morgan's law again so x double bar plus z bar y bar plus z bar right and uh, then you can so the double negation or the double complement with cancel out right so you can have uh, x plus z bar y bar plus z bar right so this is the complemented function of this right So you can always uh, convert from uh, min terms to max terms. For example, if you have uh, a Boolean expression over here, so that is mentioning m7, m6, m3, and you can have a summation, and in the bracket you have 3, 6, 7, right, in order. And you can replace it with the uh, max terms. So the possible combinations that are left, so we start from 0. So we are not having 0 over here, uh, and 1 is also not here, 2 is also not present. So 0, 1, 2, 3 is there, so we will not write down 3 here. And then we have uh, 4, 5, and 6 and 7 are here. So this is the min term representation, and this is the max term representation. And how you can represent? You put uh, this uh, multiplication sign, and in the brackets you start from 0 till Five one zero one two three uh, three is there, so we will obsolete. Uh, we will uh, not put three here. Four five. So these two representation they have the same effect, but this is regarding the main terms, right? And this is uh, the max terms. So you can always convert between uh, these canonical canonical forms right so this is the representation so they have uh, the same effect so this is the sum of the product or this is the product of the sums so that you can always have right so let's uh, go through some examples for simplifications if you have a, a boolean expression right and you want to simplify this expression right so uh, what we will be doing we will be multiplying this so a b a b plus a c plus b b and b c so this a b and a b because we have a plus a that is equal to one right so uh, we have a b right and then we have AC and this B dot B will be B right so you can look here we have only one AB because AB plus AB they are so, sorry A plus A is equal to A right and we have a B here right BC so AB plus AC plus B right so what you did over here you have taken b as common so 1 plus c so that is always equal to 1 right so and from here you have taken b common from here right so we are left with b into if you take b as common so a plus 1 right 
right? So this will be a B, right? And we have this AC. So this is the simplification. And if you calculate the or count the number of gates, we have uh, one, two, three end operations over here, right? And one, two, three, four. Four of our operations over here. So we have seven gates. So here we have only two gates. One is R and this is the AC and operation. So you have reduced five gates by using the simplification. So this is the circuitry. If we, you straight away implement this expression, right? So you can calculate the number of gates, one, two, three, four, five. So how many gates we have? Right, so one, two, three, four, right? Four. So these are the representation of uh, circuits in uh, sum of the products and product of the sums form, right? So this is a sort of two level implementation. So you can see that we have uh, level one, right? This is the first level and this is the second level. So you can have two level implementation, right? So here uh, we have two different representations, right? So let's uh, solve an example where we have to simplify this Boolean expression. So uh, we will start uh, multiplying. So A, B and A, C. So B dot B and B dot C, right? So uh, we always know that if we take A, B as A, so A plus A is equal to A, right? And then uh, this B dot B is always B, right? So uh, first step we place B dot B as B, right? And in the second step, what we did over here, A, if we take this as A, so A plus A is equal to A, so AB, single AB, right? And then what we did over here, we have taken B as common, so 1 plus C, this is always equal to 1, so B dot 1 is B, right? And then we have taken B common, so we will be having A plus 1, right? So this will always be 1, right? So we have B plus AC, so here we have only two gates, right? So you have to use more number of gates over here, right? If you look at the circuit, right? So you can see this, this is a more complicated circuit and this is the same expression but l with lesser number of gates, right? So you have only two gates, so you reduced significantly the number of gates, right? So they are equivalent, right? The, uh, the functionality performed by this circuit will be the same as the functionality performed by this circuitry. So they are the same representation and then they, they will be doing the same job. So with lesser number of gates, right? So let's uh, have another example. So here, uh, we have uh, this, right? So we will be multiplying, right? A, B bar C, A, B bar B, D, and then, so this will be zero, right? B dot B bar, this will be zero. So this whole expression will become zero. So we are left with this, right? So this is the, we cannot sim simplify it more, right? Or we can, yes, we can. Right, so here we are left with this expression and what you will be doing, you will be multiplying, right? C, A, B, C, C, right? A, B, 
and then C and uh, I'm not pronouncing the bars right so a c dot c this will be c right and then uh, what we can do we can have b bar c as common so a plus a bar is always one you always know so we are left with b bar c right so if you look here this is this looks like a complicated expression but we have only two logical operations a complement and and intersection or and operation so you can so these two expressions they will have the same impact right okay so let's have another example so we are here we have uh, this expression and we have to simplify it so let's start right so what we can do right we have this expression so we have one two three four five five different elements in this expression right if we want to make the pairs so we need one more expression so what we can do over here so this looks like a very simplified sort of uh, entity having no bar so what we will do we will use this a plus a is equal to a right so we will be using this right so let me write right? a plus a that is equal to a right so what I can do I can suppose this is a so I can add one more so this these are equivalent so here we have one ABC and we have another ABC so if you count we have now six number of entities so we can pair them right so a bar BC right this is paired with this right and this is paired with this right and this is paired with this so we have three pairs and now we can take common right BC a bar plus a b bar c bar is common a plus a bar right a c and we have b plus b bar so always know that uh, a plus a bar that is always equal to one if we have a we have a is equal to zero then you can have uh, zero and complement will be one so we will having one if a is equal to one right you can solve a one plus a bar zero so we will be having the one so it will not make the difference either a is zero or a is one we have all the time a plus a bar is equal to one right so we can place uh, one here one here and one here b plus b bar right so we are we are left with this right so what you can do you can have more common like c common you pair this with this right so b plus a or you can write uh, if you want uh, to write in order a plus b it will not make any difference because this they can they are commutative right we can commute them right so we can commute them right so it will not make any difference you can write a plus b or b, b plus a because uh, the commutative property holds over here right so this is the simplification uh, can we have uh, more simplification you have to think about it right you should think about it uh, uh, can we simplify it more or not right so another example right we have this expression right so what we will be doing we will be break the line change the sign our old friend right so here we have uh, changed the sign with this dot and we have broken the line right we have used De Morgan's law right 
So this is the same expression. So again, we have break the line, change the sign A bar plus B bar dot. This is the same dot, A bar, break the line, change the sign, A bar, right, plus C bar, right, plus A bar, B bar, C bar. So now we will be multiplying. A bar dot A bar, A bar dot C bar, right, B bar dot A bar. I have written them in order, right then b bar dot c bar and this is the same expression right so a bar dot a bar will be the a bar right and the rest is the same right so uh, now what you can do you can take common right we uh, have taken a bar as common so 1 plus b bar c right so that is always equal to 1 right irrespective of uh, what values b bar or c bar can have if we have a zero here one plus zero one if we have one here we have one plus one one so it will not make any difference what values b bar or c bar might have right and then these are the same expressions so a bar plus a bar b so again we can take a bar as common from these two right these two right so here we have 1 plus b bar, so it will always be 1, so a bar plus b bar c bar. So can we simplify it more? So for me, no, right? But you can think about, uh, right? So this is uh, the expression which we got after the simplification. So you can see the number of gates, the number of uh, operators we have to use in order to implement this expression and this expression and they have the same impact right they have the same functionality right so this is uh, another example so this should be example 5 right so here we have uh, a truth table so now we will be having a truth table and first we target t1 because we have uh, three inputs a b c right and this is the output t1 is uh, one output and t2 is another output so you can see that t2 is the complement of t1 because it's 1 0 1 0 1 0 and 0 1 so this is the t1 is complemented and we got the t2 so if you look at t1 right so we will always are interested in the rows or positions where we have the one so if we want to solve this truth table by using main terms right so here we have one so a bar b bar c bar a bar b bar c as it is because we have a one here a bar b c a bar b c because here we have one so we will take common a bar b bar c bar plus c and a bar c bar so b bar plus b right so we have c plus c bar this is always one right and this is always one right so we are left with a bar b bar a bar c bar right so what you can do now you can take a bar as common so this is the final expression we cannot simplify it more right and uh, what you have to do we have to take the complement right so of so t2 is equal to t1 complement so we will be looking so here 1 1 1 1 and 1 so a right so you can solve it yourself but you you have to take the complement right and then you will be solving this right so let me explain right uh, a bar bc right a bar bc then we have a b bar c bar right then we have a b bar 
C, right? Then A, B, C bar, right? And here we have A, B, C, right? So what you can do, you can take uh, B, C as common, right? Now we will be pairing them, right? B, C common, right? And then you have A, B bar common, right? Right? And what you can have, you have to add one more entity, right? So what you have added, so we are left with this, right? A, B, C bar, A, B, C bar. So what we have added, we have added A, B, and C. This is the additional term we have added and we will be having this. So what common we can take A, B, C plus C bar, right? So this is one, right? This is one, okay? So this is again one. So we will, we are having a lot of ones, right? So B, C, right? A, B bar plus A, B, right? And what you can have, we can take A common from this. So this is B plus B bar, right? This is one, right? So B, C plus A. So you have simplified this expression and they have the same impact. They have the same functionality, right? So this is the summary and this is uh, all about today's lecture. So today we have discussed truth tables and how can we convert uh, or move from a truth table to a circuitry or from a circuitry to a truth table and from Boolean expression to a truth table, from Boolean expression to a circuitry. Right? And we have uh, studied sum of the products and product of the sums and you can say we use min terms and max terms, right? And then uh, how we can reduce the number of gates, right? Uh, then uh, the functions, right? That can be made from n or n not, right? So uh, one suggestion is you should try more examples regarding the simplification. So next time we will be studying more logic gates so that's all for today's lecture so apna apne doston ka apne rishtedaron ka aur girdone wake logon ka khayal rakhiyega aur meri taraf se allah hafiz assalam alaikum